Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, in this Flutter development tutorial, we're going to show you how you can set up the tab bar just underneath the app bar. And this supports uh, finger swiping as well, such as if I do a three finger swipe on the Mac, I can swipe between the images as well as select them up above here. Okay, and if we look at my documentation, there is documentation for this to support the video, or you might just want to look at the documentation itself. All the code changes are in here as well. And please note that this is the last episode currently in this series. So we'll be probably looking at adding a few um, other episodes at a later stage. And I will be uploading the code to GitHub once this episode is released. All these episodes get released on a weekly basis. So we will move across to our Android Studio. Implementation of the tab bar consists of three main components. One is the tab bar itself. Um, one's going to be what's called the tab bar view and that's what you want to display after you select an item in the tab bar and then you've got the tab bar controller and then basically that synchronizes the operations between the tab bar and the tab bar view it's like the glue in between the operations between the two okay so the first thing we will need to do is to implement a tab bar controller and so I'm just going to create a property for that um, it will be of the type tab bar controller and I'll make this private and we'll call it tab controller. Okay, we do need to initialize that and inside your uh, widget, inside our state widget, we do have a basically an init method and so for any sort of initialization of members and properties that we want to be done can be done inside that init method and to get that I'm going to press command n on a Mac and then select override methods and then just select init here and it's in its state okay so any initialization of properties this is a good place to do that so we're going to initialize our tab controller we're going to create a new tab controller here it does what the length and we can get the length from our photos photos list length and I will put a semicolon on the end there right vsync I'm just going to press F1 on that and it's a uh, re it requires what's called a ticker provider and it's the ticker provider is an object that will manage the state required by the tab bar and the tab bar view, which is what the tab bar controller does. And so we need to provide it for ticker provider. And what we can do to get a ticker provider, we can use what's called getting the functionality of this class here, which is the single ticker provider state mixin. And so by just calling the keyword with, it means we can actually reuse functionality of another class, which is what we're doing. And finally, if I just go down there, finally, um, for the vSync ticket provider, we can just set it to this, and that will successfully create our tab bar controller, which is going to sort of maintain the state between our tab bar and our tab bar view and finally we do need to sh uh, shut down our tab bar controller as well and we've got an init state for when we're starting up the widget if we're closing the widget we also have what's called a dispose so again I can get to that by pressing command and selecting override methods and I'm just going to type dispose there dispose void and there it is there so we just call our tab controller and just call dispose and that will uh, gracefully shut down our tab controller. The next stage is to add a tab bar. So add, and we're going to add it just below the app bar itself. So it's going to go inside the app bar. Um, I will put it actually under the bottom there. And conveniently enough, the app bar does provide us with a bottom widget. Just put that. And so I'm going to create a new tab bar widget there and just let me tidy this up slightly 
Okay, so it's going to take tabs. If I press F1 on tabs, it's just basically at once a list of widgets. Okay, so we're going to create a list and Dart, we're going to use the Dart notation to create our list. There's our list. And basically we're going to add the tab widget there. So create a new tab. And the tab will have a text to display on that tab. And so for text, we're just going to use, get the text from our photos. Select the first element. And select title for that. And you'll notice that we're getting an error here. And it says the argument text, because it's uh, of the type text, cannot be assigned to the parameter string. And basically, all we, we can just select data. And that goes away. If I press F1 on data, and it basically passes a, represent, a string representation of that text widget. Okay, and I'm going to want an icon as well. So we'll just do similar to what we did before. And select icon there. We'll create three more copies of this, two more copies of this, and update the correct um, elements that we want for each of the tabs. So that's going to be one. And that will be two. Okay, okay, so we've now created our tabs. Um, let me just align the, the indentation for this by selecting a refat, reformat code with Dart FM. Okay, um, the tab bar also does require a controller, and we've created as a tab controller, so we can just use the tab controller we've created. Okay, now I'm going to do a hot re swap there just to just to prove that we're showing our tab bar underneath that bar. And there it is there, this this worked fine. If you do get an error, sometimes you, you if you do get an error, you will do have to do a full restart of the application just in case your tab controller hasn't been initialized properly. Um, it happened to me the first time, and I've repeated the same process exactly, but the tab bar is being displayed successfully now. And so there we have our tab bar. It's not yet doing anything because we haven't yet set up our tab bar view. Now we're going to add the tab bar view itself. Uh, that's basically the destination, destination of when you select an item in the tab bar. To do that, we're going to scroll on down. I want to get to the body of the scaffold widget here, and we're going to replace that. Okay, and so the body is going to be replaced with a new tab bar view. And I will just tidy that up. And we are going to need to realign this slightly as well because I will be adding another property. So select reformat code with Dart FM. Okay, now let's work on this list. So if I press F1 here, it does require a list. So what we're going to do is just pass in our photos list. It's called photos and we'll call a map there. So inside here I can call our photo parameter then we'll put some curly braces in here and uh, let's just get rid of this error because we're going to return a to list for that. Okay. Okay so we've got that there and basically what we all we need to do is return our Basically, if we scroll on down on that image URL rigid. And it does require a parameter image URL, and we can get that from our photo parameter. Okay, and we will need a semicolon on the end of there. Okay, so the We've now replaced the body with the tab bar view, which will be displayed. 
So what we need to do here is tab bar view also has a controller property representing the tab bar controller. So we can just pass our tab controller in there. Okay, so these should be the only changes. So let's do a hot reswap and see if we are switching across to our tab bar views now. So if I just select on image two, yes, we are in image three. And on a Mac, if I do a th three finger swipe, I can actually swipe between these tabs as well. And you notice that being highlighted and there's a little bit of anim animation going on as well. Now, if I select the drawer, or you can select the pop-up menu and select image one, nothing's actually happening here because the uh, pop-up menu and the drawer are not synchronized. But it's a simple matter of synchronizing them. And again, we've got the selected photo method here. So basically, we can just update our tab controller with the photo index. And we will need to select the tab controller. It does have a index property there. Okay, and so if we do a hot reswap now, um, our pop-up menu and our draw should now be synchronized. So do a hot reswap. And now if I select image one, we're now switching across to image one and that's now highlighted there and it seems to be highlighted in the bottom navigation bar drawer. If I select image two, we're updating those and if we select image three, everything's now synchronized with our pop-up menu and our drawer, but what is not synchronized, if I select image three, the bottom navigation bar is not synchronized. Get the bottom navigation bar um, items updated when we make changes in the tab bar. We do need to implement a listener in the tab view controller. So, and to do that, we're going to sort of add the listener in the in its state for when we first uh, set up that set up the widget. So, if we call tab bar controller, we can actually call add listener. And I'll just put a semicolon on the end of there. Okay, if I select F1 for the help. Basically, add listener takes a anonymous function of no parameters. So what we can do is just create a function just to provide it. So I'll create a void function and I'll make it private and I'll just call it tab up tab update. It's not going to have any parameters. It can't for what we need to use it for. Okay, so when we call this, we want to update the uh, UI. We want to refresh the UI, so we'll call set change, set, set state. And inside set state, we can now um, update our bottom, actually it's private, isn't it? Bottom navigation bar index by just calling our tab controller and getting its index value there. Okay, and we can now provide tab update inside, replace listener with that. Um, tab, I'm gonna have to type this in. And th there it is there. Okay, so we've added this listener and this will call the code. Um, we also need to uh, remove the listener as well when the uh, widget's being replaced or shut down. So we can call tab controller and we can call remove listener. And again, we'll provide it with the tab update. Semicolon on the end there. Okay, so we've got these two listeners there. So every time we do a swipe, this listener is going to be called and it's going to call their anonymous function tab update here. And from in the tab update, we'll update the bottom navigation bar index 
and it's called within set state so we do sort of reload the ui as well just to um, update the latest changes so we'll do a hot swap and let's see what happens now so i'll say image two and you can see image two is now being updated reflecting the changes in the bottom navigation bar and the same for so those changes haven't yet uh, migrated across. Sometimes with init state, it means you'd have to do a full restart of the application instead of a hot reload. So I'm performing a full restart now. And sometimes this will be need to happen because we've added the listener and removed the listener inside the states when the rigid reloads or closes. Okay, so we'll just wait for this image to reload. Let's go to image two. And we can now see image two has been updated. Let's select image three. Image three in the bottom navigation bar has now been updated and we can swipe back again as well. And so that's one point to note. If we are making changes inside the init state, uh, um, quite often we will have to do a full restart and a hot uh, swap won't suffice to just to add these particular changes especially in regards to our tab controller and that completes this episode of basically adding a tab bar below our app bar with the tab bar we also get swipe functionality and there's also animation support as well so just to recap um, there are three main components to implementing a tab bar you have to implement the tab bar itself you need the tab bar views just to show you where you want the result uh, widget to be displayed after selecting a tab bar and just to monitor those uh, state changes you need the tab bar controller as well we had to set that up and we set that up in the uh, in the scaffold widget or actually in the state widgets uh, in it function as well for when the widget first gets started anyway so that completes this tutorial if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to get notified of the tutorials that I'm working on and please note take care if you're going to post any technical questions I tend not to respond to them purely I don't have enough time and I do provide um, to keep this channel going and to pay for my expenses I do have a code mentor account as well I'll put a link up there that's paid support where I help people out with their projects and I also provide tuition services and teaching services for Flutter, Dart, Kotlin, Android, Java, etc. Anyway, thank you for taking the time for watching this one. Bye for now.